Howdy. So last video we went over how to model a 2D airfoil using vortices. Today we'll be moving up a dimension. So just as there's multiple ways to approach the 2D, there are a few ways to approach the 3D. So I'll be doing an overview of each of those that I have seen. First, the main thing we're trying to capture when going from 2D to 3D is the phenomenon of downwash and tip vortices. This is a consequence of the wing having an end. For in the 2D case, we assume that the wing was infinitely long with no ends, but when there are ends, the flow will want to go to the lower pressure from the higher pressure on the lower surface. This means that the lower flow will go around the end and this produces a rotation at the tips. So for the most simplest 3D method, it would be Prandtl's lifting line theory, which is where we place a horseshoe vortex filaments on the leading edge going out the trailing edge, and then we add a bunch more moving inward. But for this video, we're going to focus on paneling methods. So we can approximate this wing by its camera line along the span. With this, we have many configurations the wing can take. We can add angle of attack, give it a roll, a slip, we can sweep the wings, give it some taper, and even make it a dihedral wing, or all of the above. So finally, let's get into it. We begin with flattening out our wing and making it a boring rectangle. We discretize it into a grid of span and cord, and in the name of the game is we want to place vortex filaments on the panels and find locations where we want to control the velocity. These locations will be what we use to ensure the boundary condition that no flow goes through the wing, only over and under. So building off Prandtl's idea with the vortex horseshoes, we can find the locations of each panel that is 25% from the leading edge of the panel to the trailing edge of the panel on the span-wise edges. So here would be those locations. These will be where the horseshoes cross over the panel. Then we extend these horseshoes to the trailing edge of the wing. And then we have a few choices to go from there. You can have it follow the free stream or deflect downward slightly. But the most accurate method is to have it deflect downward, then asymptotically approach the free stream again. That method is not so easy. But for here, we will go with the negative of the angle of attack for simplicity, thus following the free stream. So with that, we have our horseshoes set. Now we need the locations where we want to ensure the boundary conditions. We now find the center of the panel spanwise, and then go back 75% of the way for each panel these will be our points of interest. Now with almost all paneling methods, we follow these simple steps. Find the velocity of all points of interest normal to the surface, caused by all the vortex filaments if they were had a strength of one, then set these equal to the incoming free stream so that we can find the strength the vortices need to be to cancel out the velocity normal to the surface. This process is very similar to the process in my last video for the 2D case, only now there's a third dimension and more vortices. So we can start by setting up the A matrix now. We start by finding what the velocity is due to this vortex filament at a given point. Using the two points, the ends of the filament, we can turn Bjorn Savart's law down to this. Here, the vector R1 is the vector from N1 to the point of interest, and same goes for R2 with just N2, while R0 is the vector the vortex forms. Also, the non-vector R1 and R2 is just the magnitude of their vectors, respectfully. It is important to think of each horseshoe as one entity. It is not five vortex filaments, but just one. Now, to make our lives easy, we've mathematically solved them as multiple straight filaments, but in our A matrix, it's only one. So A11, would be adding all the velocities from the filaments for horseshoe 1 dotted with the normal of the surface vector at location 1. And for something like A34, it would be horseshoe 4 at long location 3. Rows are the locations and columns are the horseshoes. The right hand side is found the exact same way as the 2D case, but with just three dimensions now. We can also expand this by giving some camber. Now, with this, we have two main methods to go. We either keep it flat and fake the camber, or curve the surface and go from horseshoe vortexes to vortex rings. Starting with keeping it flat, the only change you would be making is instead of having your normal vector based on the flat surface, you would instead align them to follow the camber like this. Then you would just go about 
the A gamma equals right hand side like normal. You can find the lift per panel using this equation where delta yij is the distance span wise that the horseshoe takes up. The next method is to close off each of those horseshoes turning them into rings. Then add our own vortex inducing flow to the trailing edge in a way to ensure the cut condition is held. So the layout is similar to the horseshoe but here we go back to the beginning of the other vortex side like this. So in this setup we have vortex filaments laying on top of each other span wise and cord wise. Previously it was only span wise. This will affect the lift later. We will keep the same locations of interest and solve like normal except we will need the vortex rings at the trailing edge to have the same strength as the horseshoe wake vortexes that way the cutter condition can be set. This can be done by combining the trail edge vortex ring and the free wake vortex horseshoe as one in the A matrix, meaning when you find the velocity of a given point due to that vortex ring, go ahead and add the velocity that that horseshoe wake would cause too. Just make sure you're doing it so that they're matched up span wise. And again, the direction of the free wake vortex is kind of up to you. Some authors say to follow the free stream, some say divert down. So best to experiment and find what best matches your data. Now for this method, your lift will be different than the other one. The leading edge vortex rings will have the same equation, but for all the others, you need to account for the fact that its vorticity is reduced by the one ahead of it. So this would be the equation for the rest of them. So this video was less in depth and more of an overview of the different methods for 3D vortex paneling. But that is mostly because everything of detail is covered in the 2D case, and the real difference is within the layout. I hope you enjoyed, and my next video will hopefully be covering simulating advection of fluids and making a simple simulated wind tunnel with it.